Depersonalization can be a really strange experience. And one of the most common questions for people who get it is, what could have caused it? Hey everyone, I'm Sean O'Connor, author of the Depersonalization Manual. I suffered with chronic depersonalization disorder for two years before I recovered completely. And in the more than 10 years since, my book, The Depersonalization Manual, has helped thousands of people around the world to recover from DP. And today, we'll be answering the question, what causes depersonalization disorder? Let's get started. So first off, let's remember that depersonalization is an anxiety-based condition. So in the vast majority of cases, depersonalization is caused by stress and trauma. Now I'd like to mention that in much rarer cases, depersonalization and derealization can also be caused by head trauma and brain injury. What I'll be speaking about today is anxiety-based DP and DR, which are much more common. But of course, if you've recently experienced any head trauma, please don't hesitate to speak to a medical professional. In terms of anxiety-based DP and DR, the three most common triggers for this are Number one, panic attacks. Number two, bad drug experiences. And number three, accumulated stresses. So why are these specific events triggers for depersonalization disorder? Well, let's take a look at each one and find out. Number one, Panic attacks. Panic attacks are extremely common. It's estimated that one in 10 people regularly experience panic attacks, and one in three will have at least one at some point in their lives. They can hit you out of nowhere, and when they do, your fight or flight system kicks in. Your body prepares you for danger. This causes a number of different physical reactions. Heart palpitations, tense muscles, dilated pupils. In evolutionary terms, it's a great system. If you were being chased by a wild animal, this is exactly what you'd want your body to do. But remember that it also causes mental reactions. For example, racing thoughts and catastrophizing are extremely common. And another common mental symptom is the feeling of depersonalization. The sense of being cut off from the world around you is extremely useful in life or death situations. It numbs you to the immediate danger and allows you to remain calm. Think of it like an airbag for your brain. The problem arises when there is no actual danger around. There's no wild animal chasing you, no fire, no nothing. Just the intense, unexplained fear of the panic attack and this bizarre feeling of unreality. But if that's the case, why does the feeling of DP sometimes continue after the panic attack is over and turn into what we call depersonalization disorder? Well, the explanation is quite simple. What often happens with people experiencing a panic attack is that they focus on one specific symptom of the panic attack. Take heart palpitations, for example. Somebody having a panic attack will often focus on their increased heart rate and jump to the mistaken conclusion that they must be having a heart attack. That's why you so often hear about people having panic attacks, checking themselves into hospital, certain that they're in the middle of a cardiac arrest. The doctors examine them, tell them that they're in perfect physical health and send them home. It happens all the time. And the exact same thing happens with depersonalization. It's a perfectly natural and recognized mental symptom of stress and trauma. 75% of all adults in the US will experience DP or DR at some point in their lives. It's that common. But when you experience it as part of a panic attack, it can be focused on in the same way as others do on the heart palpitations. Those weird feelings of unreality? Well, just like increased heart rate, they're actually there to protect you as part of your body and brain's defense mechanism. But in the midst of a panic attack, you focus on them specifically and think of them as a threat. You think, I must be going crazy. This can create a feedback loop between the anxiety and DP, which is a symptom of the anxiety, which can keep going long after the initial panic attack has subsided. So now you're still frightened and super aware of the feelings of DP and constantly checking in on them, not allowing them to fade away and stop naturally, which is what they're supposed to do. This habit of checking in, fueled by constant research, keeps the feedback loop going and can quickly turn into what we call depersonalization disorder. Number two, bad drug experiences. Drug-induced depersonalization can be triggered by any drug, and usually in the context of a bad drug experience. 
The most common drugs associated with depersonalization disorder are LSD, magic mushrooms, and in particular, weed. The latter is becoming extremely common, primarily due to the legalization of weed and edibles across the US and Canada and around the world. Now, I want to point out that this is in no way a criticism of the legality of weed. There are many health benefits associated with cannabis. But of course, like all psychoactive drugs, there are also risks associated with it. And the more awareness we have of those, the better. With drug-induced DP, the most typical situation is that somebody is smoking weed for the first time and doesn't know what to expect. Or they're an experienced smoker who tries a strain that is much stronger than they expected. You might have been expecting a mellow, relaxing experience, but are suddenly thrown into a full-on trip. This can be terrifying. You think that you might be going crazy, that you've damaged your brain, that you'll never get out of it. And depending on how much you've smoked or ingested, the experience can last for hours. Bad drug experiences are often dismissed as being insignificant, but it's important to emphasize just how traumatic the experience itself can feel, especially for somebody who is new to the drug. But it's very important to remember that it's not the weed or any other drug that actually causes the ongoing feelings of depersonalization. The weed can be the trigger, but it's the perceived trauma from the frightening experience that actually causes it. Remember, if you're panicking and worrying that you're going to die or go crazy, and it lasts for hours, well, that's a scary experience. Of course, you're not actually in any danger, but still, it's a very frightening experience. And because of the mental effects while on weed, short-term memory loss, inability to concentrate, etc., the feelings of panic are both intensified and more introspective. And just like with a panic attack, this can start a feedback loop of anxiety and depersonalization that can last long after the drug is out of your system. Not only that, the feelings of DP can make you worry that you're still high, hours or days after smoking the weed. You might think that you've broken your brain or flipped a switch in your brain and now you're stuck like this forever. But don't worry. Once the drug is out of your system, it's out of your system. Just like with the panic attack, the feelings of being still high are just the feedback loop of anxiety and DP running on longer than it should. I know it can be scary, but it's temporary and it's harmless and you can reduce and stop it 100%. Number three, accumulated stresses. Depersonalization doesn't always have to be caused by something as clear and obvious as a panic attack or a bad drug experience. I often speak to people who have developed DP but can't quite put their finger on what caused it. It may have developed over the course of a few days or weeks with no obvious trigger. However, there has invariably been a buildup of stress beforehand, be it from relationships, work, grieving, health, etc. We often have a tendency to push our problems down or accept intense daily stress and anxiety as being normal. This is especially common in today's environment with the stress of short-term contracts, financial pressure, and global issues like climate change, etc. So don't underestimate the impact that stresses like these can have. They can build up and trigger intense anxiety, causing the protective mechanism of depersonalization to surface even without a clear and obvious single event to cause it. Each one of these causes are pretty common. So you might ask, if DP can be triggered by so many different stresses, aren't you always at risk of it coming back, even after you've recovered? The answer is no. Part of recovery is understanding that DP is actually nothing to be afraid of. It's a symptom of anxiety. That's all. It's the mental equivalent of heart palpitations or muscle tension or dilated pupils. It's designed to be a temporary measure to help you get out of dangerous situations. It's not dangerous, it can't hurt you, and it won't turn into anything worse. It's your body and brain's defense mechanism doing exactly what it's supposed to do at times of anxiety and stress. DP is a temporary measure your body uses to get you out of danger. That's all. Because the only reason depersonalization lasts longer than it should is that it gets stuck, temporarily, in a feedback loop with the anxiety that caused it in the first place. But what causes depersonalization disorder, be it drugs, panic attacks, stress, etc., is ultimately not that important. Why? Because it always results in the same temporary, harmless, treatable condition. 
remember that no matter what caused your DP or how long you've had it, it's still just a feedback loop. And all you need to do to end that feedback loop is to reduce and stop the anxiety that's causing it. Once you do that, all the symptoms of DP will fade away and stop completely, just like they're supposed to do, regardless of what caused them in the first place. If you want tons more information on depersonalization recovery, check out my website at dpmanual.com, where you'll find everything that you need to know, including my complete guide to recovery, the depersonalization manual. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer and help out. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you found this video helpful, please do like and share. Thanks for watching.